Hello, Facebook family. I started this live <laughs> and I had to stop because uh, someone was at the door. So I'm back again. I had to restart everything from scratch because uh, I was still pretty much just starting when I got interrupted. So anyway, um, we're back on. And I was talking about digital transformation in, in education, right? Uh, this week is the last week of uh, the school year, so to say, and uh, I had to go this morning to collect the report cards for my kids. As many parents are doing here in South Africa, I don't know about other parts of, uh, of Africa or other parts of the world, uh, but this week in South Africa is when schools are closing for... For the end of the year and for the festive seasons and the festivities and the holidays and all of that. So when I went in to collect the report card for my kids this morning, um, while standing there, I started thinking about digital transformation in education. And I was, it was a bit frustrating for me because honestly, I did not want to go collect that report card. One, it was raining, like there was a lot of rain this morning in Johannesburg. And, and number two, I had an online meeting at 10, 10 a.m., which was the, almost the same time as the time given by the school to come and collect <laughs> the report cards. I was like, how do I manage the two? I don't really want to go out. But I had to go collect the report cards, right? So I got very frustrated with all of that. And it got me thinking about digital transformation in education. I was like, why can't this report card be emailed to me? Why can't the school system digitize their system and email this to parents at the end of the year? Why do I have to go and stand in that queue, right? So I was asking these questions to myself. And I thought um, maybe I should just do a live uh, Facebook about this and, and share my thoughts around, you know, digitizing the, the, the education system, which I think that digitizing the education system is really key to progress. It is key to social inclusion. It is key to affordable education. It is key to a lot of things, you know, a lot of good things that can happen. It is actually key to closing the digital divide that is currently, you know, so big in Africa. So for me, you know, this is the report that I collected, uh, you know, from my daughter this morning. And I kept asking myself, couldn't this piece of paper be emailed to me? I mean, is there no way the education system can digitize, you know, so that each teacher, for example, maybe they have 30, 30 kids in class or, or 40 or whatever number they have in class, they can... They can give a couple of hours, you know, each day, whichever day they choose to, 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 to hand this over to parents and just sit and email this whole thing to parents without me necessarily having to go there. And secondly, emailing it to me is way safer because this, this is lying here on my table. If I'm not careful, by the end of the day, I can actually, you know, end up throwing it in the bin without realizing that this is actually the report card for my kid. But when you email it to me, it's safe and I can only use it when uh, I need it, I can print it out when I need it. So emailing it to me is way safer than me having to go and stand in that queue and collect that report card, which I did not want to do. So there is need for digitization of education in Africa. Uh, I think that other parts of the world are way ahead of Africa. <laughs> and <clears throat> I think that South Africa in particular has made some progress. Uh, but still, there is a lot of room for improvement when it comes to digitization in education, right? Um, uh, we also know that the COVID pandemic, for the COVID, uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic, forced a lot of uh, digital transformation to happen within the education system. But still, there is a lot of room for improvement. Okay, uh, because uh, imagine how many parents their day is being disrupted today or this week. Uh, some parents will collect tomorrow, some will collect their report cards until Friday. Imagine the disruption it brings to their daily activities to have to go to school to collect these report cards. When the system could be digitized in such a way that they, they just email it to parents, right? So if you're a parent, you understand what I'm talking about. And if you are joining me live, 
I would like you to share your thoughts uh, in the comment section about what you think you know is lacking in the education system uh, wherever you are. If you're in South Africa, you can share your own thoughts. If you are in any part of Africa, or any part of the world, you can share your own thoughts. What you think you know needs to improve in the education system, especially in the in the digital age. Uh, like I was like I was saying, report cards should be emailed to parents. I do understand that some schools. Some schools are making progress, especially, I think, the private schools are a bit ahead when it comes to digital transformation of the system, of the education system. But the government is really behind, is really behind when it comes to digital transformation in education. And it is about time that these things are taken seriously. It is about time that the education system, you know, um, really starts functioning like they are in the digital era, you know. Um, we cannot maintain systems that have been in place for the past, we don't know, 200 years or so. We cannot continue to maintain these systems. Now, when we are in the digital era, we need to evolve to the place where we are really putting key uh, understanding that we are in a digital system and really evolving according to the times in which... Uh, in which we are living. You know, uh, somebody is uh, commenting, says, absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you, Vincent. Uh, the improvements will certainly make it a great experience and very convenient. Absolutely, I agree. This will really, really be a great experience for the, for the, for the kids themselves and for teachers themselves and very convenient. We don't have to go stand these queues as parents to collect report cards when they can be emailed to us. You know, set an automated system where... The, the, the emails are sent to the parents at the end of the year or at the end of the term where they don't have to come. Sometimes these report cards are handed to kids and you know how careless children can be. They can lose them. <laughs> Sometimes they will get home and like, oops, I think I lost my report card. Oops, uh, I think the rain fell on it. Or oops, I think I poured juice on it or I poured water on it or something. So it is very convenient and it's very safe for the education system to be digitized. Right. Um, Whatever communication that needs to happen at the end of the term for parents and teachers, most of it can be done via email. You know, have an automated email system where the information that you want parents to know regarding that term and regarding the next upcoming term or regarding next year, share that information via emails. You know, I know that there are some parents. I'm talking. I'm, I'm speaking as a take seven person, right? But. I also understand that there are some parents that don't even have an email address, depending where they are, you know, and they don't also understand technology. But we need to evolve and challenge people to evolve with the times. We need to evolve and challenge systems, you know, and challenge mindsets to also start expecting that, oh, I think the school is going to communicate to me via email, so I should pay attention. And email is actually like an ancient... <laughs> style of communication, right? But still, there are some people that don't have an email address. There are some people that don't check their emails. There are some people that are really not paying attention to that. Okay, if email is a problem, a lot of people are on WhatsApp. So the school system can decide, okay, we are going to forward this information on WhatsApp for parents that are on WhatsApp and don't necessarily have to go through um, an email or creating an email address. Everyone has a phone number. So... Like I, saw, like I was saying, uh, everything is it's not like I'm bashing the whole system. There has been some progress, and we have to acknowledge that there has been some progress. But still, there is a lot of room for improvement, especially when it comes to public schools. A lot of private schools are already making a lot of strides and improvements in their education system. But there is still a lot of improvement that needs to happen, you know, and we have to be open to that as parents, as educators. As teachers, we have to be open to these improvements. If you are a parent who is not, who is not so tech savvy, don't just base your mindset on always going to school all the time to get information from the school. Also push forward to digitization on how things can be communicated to you via your phone, via your email, or whatever, without necessarily having to go to school, right? Like, like I was saying earlier. So that was my frustration this morning about report cards email them to me. <laughs> I don't have to go and stand that queue. I wasn't happy, you know. I, I thought, well, this is making a life would be um, 
uh, the most convenient way to vent my frustration because I feel that I'm not the only one feeling this way. I think that there are some parents feeling the same way, you know, like, why do I have to go and stand in these long queues to collect a report card for my kid? And secondly, um, just something that I have also observed uh, with, the, with the kids, I look at the amount of books that my daughter carries to school or my son carries to school. These school bags are so heavy that they actually walk with their back hunch, you know, and they complain of back pain. They complain of how heavy their books are. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, if some of these subjects were digitized, where kids focused, you know, on maybe learning through their gadgets, uh, education would be fun for kids. You know, because most of these kids, when they come back home, they automatically plug into their gadgets or their computers or their phones and they start playing games or they're on TikTok or whatever they are on. But then the next school day, they have to carry these heavy school bags to school. There is a disconnect because these kids are spending a lot of time on their gadgets, on the, on the Internet. And then when it comes to learning, they completely switch to an analog system, so to say. So it makes them not looking forward or not looking excited to going to school because carrying this heavy school bag is not fun for anyone. It's not fun for the kids. It's not fun for parents. I'm like, digitize the system. Digitize the system where some of the textbooks can be digital textbooks. These kids don't have to carry these heavy books to school all the time. Um like I mentioned earlier, I think some schools have already digitized this way. The kids have access to some of these uh, digital textbooks, right? But it's not for all schools. Again, the public schools, the government schools are really behind when it comes to these things. So I think that the digital transformation should not just happen in the area of communication with this, between the schools and the parents. It should also happen on how kids are learning. Some of the books that kids are carrying to school are unnecessary. It's a load for them. It's a, they look at it as a heavy, a heavy burden for them. They don't want to carry that many books to school. So even as a parent, when you look at the amount of books your child is carrying to school and how, and how they have to navigate each day and come back home with that heavy load, even you as a parent, you feel like, oh my God, this is too much for my child. So we want, you know, some of the textbooks to be digitized and kids should be able to access them. There should be a system in school where kids are able to access these textbooks via, you know, whatever system they have in school and not necessarily having to, to carry these books to school. I know that if it is digitized, uh, then the money aspect of how some people are making money of textbooks in, in schools or educator, educators, educators, uh, there is a trade-off. There has to be some some of a trade-off because uh, textbooks are a huge source of income, you know, in the education industry. Textbooks, we know, they are a huge sort of source of income. And so, if the system is digitized, that huge source of income is sort of like gone. So there has to be innovation and look at ways in which this can be evolved, you know, rather than. Just sticking like, no, we cannot let go of this source of income that is bringing either to the educators or to uh, people who write these books or to the system. We have to, instead of just sticking on the profit side, look at convenience. Like someone mentioned in the comments, right? Con the convenient aspect of it. If the textbooks are digitized, it's a lot of convenience for the kids. You know, like I was saying, these kids are already very tech savvy. Kids nowadays spend their whole time on gadgets, on these technology systems. And so when they have to completely switch to, the, to an analog system or to an old ancient system to study, there is a disconnect. And that is why most of them don't find education so fascinating. Most of our kids don't find uh, education, you know, they don't enjoy it because it's a system that they are not used to. So there needs to be transformation when it comes to learning, you know. Digitizing the textbook, textbooks will reduce the load and the amount of books that kids carry to school on a daily basis, especially kids that are in public schools. So this is really a cry and a desire for me as a parent to see some of these things implemented in the education system. It is very important. 
uh, there are so many advantages, you know, to digitizing the education system. There are so many advantages to implementing uh, uh, digital transformation in the education system. Every, all of the kids we have access to, to this information because there are some kids that cannot afford these textbooks, right? We have to also take that into consideration. Not all kids are able to afford some of the textbooks that the schools are demanding or are requiring. But if these textbooks are digitized and there is like a digital library in school where they can access these textbooks, then no one will be left behind. A kid will not have to fail exams because they did not have a textbook, a textbook right? The cost to access a digital version of a textbook will be way cheaper than buying the actual textbook and some of them. There are like five textbooks, six textbooks, ten textbooks that they have to, some parents have to buy for for each year, you know. So I think that the, the benefits far outweigh whatever the school system think they'll be losing by digitizing some of these things. If we want to close the digital gap and we want to close the skill gap, digitizing some of these uh, processes will make education or learning much easier for kids. Secondly, not all kids also have access to gadgets and the internet and things like that. So if the kids does not if the, if a kid doesn't have access to the internet or gadgets at home and this kid doesn't also have access to gadgets or the internet in the school and yet this kid is learning Imagine the disconnect when they finally get into the real world, a world of work where they have to work with computers. Think about that. Imagine the disconnect they will feel when they get into the world of employment where they have to, you know, do everything through a digital system. So for kids that their parents don't have access to these things, the school should be the place, the one place where they are able to close their digital gap their lack of digital skills, you know. The school should be the one place where they will be able to touch a computer for the first time or access some of the things via the internet for the first time. So the school system should be able to put these things in place to close the digital divide, you know, to close the digital gap. It is quite important. Imagine a kid who has never touched a computer or having to search anything on the internet and this kid finishes school and have to go work at an organization, either organization A or either organization B. Imagine how intimidated this kid will be or this person will be. The school did not expose them to that. The school has never exposed them to the digital system. And now in the world of work, they are being forced to work with digital systems because there is really no industry that is not being affected by digital transformation. So any job you are finding today, any job today will require some sort of digital skills. And if these digital skills are lacking in our schools, and if the school does not even have a computer lab where kids can get to interact with a computer, the kids can get to interact with a laptop, if schools don't even have these things in place, how will this kid, after graduation, after completing metrics or after completing the advanced level, uh, whatever, how will they be able to integrate in the world of work if the school doesn't even have a digital system in place? But they are teaching them and they are saying that they are preparing this school, these kids for the future of work. Just think about it and imagine the disconnect that is going to happen when these kids are finally in the real world. When these kids are finally in a world where they have to work with digital systems, where they have to operate a computer, but the school never gave them that opportunity. They never saw a computer lab. For some kids at home, parents are able to give them these things, but not all parents are able to afford a computer for their kids. Not all parents are able to afford a phone, a smartphone for their kid. Not all parents are able to, to expose their kid to this digital world. Not all parents are able to afford internet on a consistent basis. So the school should be able to close this gap, understanding that there is no job that will exist. There is no job that exists now, and there is no job that will exist in the future without some sort of interaction with the computer.
is almost impossible. So the school system should think about the future of work. Think about how kids are required to work with computers. Think about how kids are supposed to understand how to navigate the internet. The school system should understand these things and expose the children to it. And expose our kids to it. This is, this is very important. Because a kid that has never been exposed to com a computer will be forced to be exposed to a computer when they finally are in the world of work, in the real world. And then they will be like, oh, wow, this is different from what I was taught in school. They cannot be able to function. They cannot be able to function. So the future of work, the future of work and the school system, they are, they are on different scales, you know. What is currently happening in the world of work and the type of education being offered to our kids, there is no relevance. There is no, yeah, there's no relevance whatsoever. There's a huge disconnect. I recently, uh, last year, my, uh, I enrolled my kids for coding classes, right? Because uh, I believe that the future, kids need to understand computer language, you know, and coding is the best way to understand computer language and how to interact with computers for many kids. So when they started their coding classes, I remember my son coming back, and, 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 like, they're so excited about it. So they had to go share with their friends in school, like, hey, I started learning coding. I'm going for coding classes every Saturday. And most of these kids will be like, what is coding? <laughs> I laugh, but this is really not a laughing matter because the digital device is so huge. It is so huge. These are, my son is in grade eight, which is high school, right? And you imagine a high school kid in grade eight asking, what is coding? This kid has literally four years to, to matriculate and they have no understanding what is coding. Yet the future requires that children understand some sort of programming language. So when they came home and they were explaining to me the kid, their, their, their classmates don't, don't understand what is coding. And there were a few, maybe like two or three out of 40 kids in a class, out of 30 kids in a class. There were like two or three that had an understanding of what coding is, or at least had some sort of, they have heard it before. They may not be offering it in their school, but they've heard coding, you know. So when I was reflecting on things like this, I'm like, where are we going as a society? You know, we are leaving our kids behind. Not all parents can afford to sign up their kids for coding classes. But the education system should be able to fill that gap for these kids. But they don't. They don't. Some principals, some principals that are in charge of the, of the, of the schools don't even understand what is coding. You know. One of the things that I also notice, you know, when I share about my kids learning coding is, is in the church where, you know, church members, we are, it's also like, what is coding? <laughs> what is that? And sometimes I don't even know how to answer the question, right? So I feel like the church is failing when it comes to opening people's minds to how the world of technology or technology is changing the world. I feel like the education system is also failing us and this is a conversation that should be happening in churches because after Sunday morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these are the world where people are not spending, these are days where people are not spending in church. They are spending them in the real world. They are at work and they are interacting with, 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 uh, with, with technology. So I think that the conversation around technology should be happening in church as well. As a Christian, I would want to see that happening. I would want to interact with Christians that are tech savvy, that understand the impact of technology. And they can even, you know, be able to bring innovative systems, build systems from a Christian perspective that solve some of the social problems that we face in the world. But if, as Christians, we are so focused on going to heaven that we don't even understand what is happening right in front of us, 
We don't understand how technology is impacting our world. Even though every Christian has a smartphone, <laughs> somehow at least the most that I know, but we are still so far behind. We don't want to have these conversations. We don't want to acknowledge technology. Some Christians actually are looking at technology like it's a demonic sort of activity. But yet they have a smartphone, right? Yet they're on Facebook. Yet they are on TikTok. Uh, and things like that. But the conversations around technology are completely absent from our churches. How are we preparing Christians for the world in which we are living? When there is a new technology in place, the church starts referring to it as some sort of a, a demonic activity or something. It's not true. We are deceiving ourselves if we think that we cannot coexist with technology. I'm bringing in the church because this is one of the huge communities where people gather and share information. And if the, the, the conversation around how technology is impacting our world is absent from these communities, then there is a disconnect. There is a disconnect. The, the church has a huge role to play when it comes to conversations around innovation. It comes to conversations around digital transformation. It should not be left behind. As Christians, our job is not just to pray. And I'm waiting to go to heaven. We are sent here for a purpose, for a reason. And if you want to em embrace your purpose in this world, you want to do what God sent you here in the world to do, you need to align yourself with technology. You need to understand how technology is impacting your world. How is technology impacting your environment? In fact, how is technology impacting your own children? Because there is so much negativity that kids are exposed to in the digital space. And if parents themselves do not understand this, how will they be able to protect their children? So these are conversations to be had, not just allowing everything in the education system, right? Not just blaming the education system and folding our hands as parents that, oh, the education system should take care of it. We have a role to play as parents, we have a role to play in society as a church, and we cannot, as a church function, to play a role in the society without understanding how technology is impacting that particular society and that environment we find ourselves. So these are some of the thoughts that have been running through my mind the whole morning as I went to collect my child's uh, report card, and I'm I'm seeing the divide and the disconnect that is happening between the real world and the education system and the church, since I'm a Christian, you know. So I feel like we need to wake up. I feel like as individuals, we need to wake up and align ourselves and have an understanding of technology. The time where conversations around technology was only for specific people is over. Because when we talk about technology, some people just push it. Oh, this is for IT guys. This is for tech gurus. No. If you have a smartphone, <laughs> you're already an IT person. If you can go on Google and search whatever you're searching for, you're already an IT person. In fact, if you are living in the 21st century, you are an IT person. So you cannot sit and say, this does, not, this does not apply to me because I'm not in IT. No. Technology is impacting your life. It's impacting your future. It's impacting your job. It's impacting your children. So you need to have the basic understanding of how to navigate the world of disruptive technologies. And if you don't, then your children will be exposed to danger, so to say. If you don't understand the basics of technology, I'm not asking you to be an expert in auting, in auting state. No, just understand the basics of it. How is it impacting your industry? How is it impacting your job? These are the basics that each and every one of us need to understand about technology. And evolve accordingly, right? You don't have to go understand the whole world of tech. Just understand how is it impacting 
your particular industry? What do you need to learn to be able to evolve in your industry? What do you need to learn as a parent to be able to protect your children online? These conversations can happen anywhere, everywhere. Just pay attention to it and not close off your mind or your ears and say, I'm not in the IT space, so this is not for me. No. We are all being affected by technology. We are all being disrupted. We are all being impacted. So the area you and I wake up to understand that technology is coming for all of us. <laughs> Tech is disrupting all of us. When you understand that, then you will know that you have a role to play as a parent, as an educator, as a community uh, leader or whatever you are. You have a role to play. You know, bring other people along the journey. The conversations should not completely be absent from home. We shouldn't be basing decisions or we shouldn't be making decisions based on the past, you know, choosing a career for your kid or choosing a career for yourself based on what used to be 10 years ago. The world has changed. The world has changed. If you are going to be a doctor, which a lot of people, you know, want to become doctors, ask yourself, how has technology changed that profession? How is technology changing that industry before you get into it? You want to be an accountant? Ask yourself, how is technology changing the accounting profession? What do you need to do differently? Or maybe you don't even need to get into the accounting field at all. So I don't want to carry on too long with the conversation. It was really about sharing the digital transformation that needs to happen in the education system. So I think that we will need to have more of this conversation um, in, on my own platform, I, I want to have more of these conversations with people so that we can share, you know, what we think about how, con how technology is changing our world, you know. For many of our children, they are already far ahead <laughs> when it comes to tech and the digital space. Many of our kids know how to navigate um, this digital space better than some of us. So the kids are already there, but what, where we need to catch up is us as parents and us as educators, uh, educators and, uh, and the education system in general, you know. The kids are already there. The kids understand technology to an extent. The kids understand how to use these gadgets to an extent. We should stop forcing them to stay with that analog system, with that ancient system. We should evolve to meet the kids where they are. These kids are hungry for something that is more tech savvy. So, um, it's been great having this conversation. We're looking forward to more conversations around technology and things like that. Thank you guys for watching and for those who were sharing your comments. I appreciate them. And thank you, Jonathan, for your comment. Uh, we're looking forward to having more of this conversation. Thank you and bye.